walking in the garden with you. Mount Vernon's another really I, Absolutely. Yeah. I started yeah. citing Mount Vernon, absolutely. Yes, and Thomas Jefferson left us just a huge amount of information. He left information about everything he did, but he kept a diary, a garden book, for about 30 years. And in this garden book, he put down everything that you can imagine. He put down when he planted things, where he planted them, how much he was able to get from what he planted, when the first vegetables came to the table, which crops failed, which ones didn't, which ones he liked, which ones he didn't like the taste of. And he kept huge amounts of records. And because of this, we have so much information about the gardening uh, traditions of the Revolutionary Era. Mr. Jefferson also, besides keeping records of his garden, had invented, and if you've been to Monticello, you've seen the little invention, where he invented a little machine that he could write a letter, and he would attach something to his hand, and it attached to another little machine over here, and he would make carbon copies of his letters as he wrote them. And so he kept copies of all of his correspondence as well by doing this. And of course, now we just throw it in a copy machine, and that's all we just email. But he had the foresight to realize that someday the information that he had in his mind and what he was sharing with other people might be important, and certainly it was. And he wrote hundreds of letters about seed swapping. Now, we had a seed swap here a month or two back, and it was really a lot of fun. And seed swapping, you learn all kinds of things about seeds that you've never heard of before. Well, Mr. Jefferson wrote letters all over the world and swapped seeds with people in Europe and in Asia and all over the place. And because of him, we had a huge influx of new vegetables and new plants. So as we learned about Mr. Jefferson and and went to Williamsburg and so forth, we said, you know, this is really our bag. This is something we really want to get into. So that's what we're doing. We are involved in heirloom seeds and heirlooms only. We sell only heirlooms, open pollinated, untreated seed. No chemicals, no none of that stuff. And um, we feel like it's very, very important now, in this time in history, to preserve our seed diversity. We are beginning to lose what we had in the past. You know, um, there are a lot of, I, I've heard people talking about kids getting off the Xboxes and, and getting out there and gardening and finding out what the, what the outdoor world is about and so forth. Well, you know, we're losing a lot of skills. Our forefathers did things every day that none of us do anymore. They made their own butter, their own cheese, they raised all their own food, they cooked on wood fires, they spun their own cloth. They did all of those things that we never have to do anymore. And those skills are being lost. And so are the gardening skills and the seed diversity that they have. So we felt like this was really an important thing for us to be involved in, and that's why we are involved with heirloom seeds. We want to talk to you just a little bit about three different kinds of seeds. First of all, uh, some of you are big gardeners already, and so I'm not telling you anything new that you don't know, but for those people who might not know, we have people come in all the time and say, I want organic seeds, and that's all I want. And that's wonderful, except that you can have organic heirlooms and you can have organic hybrids. Organic just means the plant that that seed came from was never sprayed with anything. No fungicides, no herbicides, no suicides, no insecticides. None of those sides were, were put on that plant. But that can be an heirloom, it can be an open pollinated, it can be a hybrid. So organic doesn't necessarily 